Although traditionally gypsies have lived on the fringes of society, gathered together in tight-knit insular communities, for years local authorities have tried to encourage travellers into permanent housing. I think the time for travellers now is changing. It is at a crossroads. Now they're getting forced from place to place, um, you know, getting sites closed down on them. So they are forced onto the roads, they're forced onto the sides of roads, they're forced into anywhere they can possibly go. So what's happening is their families now are, are splitting up. And then ones who were, I'll never go, I would never settle, I would never. Now you see them coming and going, well, you know, I might have to settle. They're like dropping like flies now. <laughs> Having been born on a site, Irish traveller Frida Berry moved into a house with her family at the age of two. You'll be wearing the real one next week, help of God. A week before her wedding day, she's out with her closest friends, hunting for a suitable outfit for this evening's hen night. Oh, do you think? Do like That's it? That's nice. I think yeah. really is lovely. Do you think it's nice? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like it. What do you reckon about the nun one? I no, I'm not going to try that one. I'm going to try that. Look, it gets to cross and everything, but it's made. Why don't you want to be a nun? Ah, because I've been a nun all of my life. <laughs> That's nice. Like that one. Yeah, Girl. That really is lovely. You look groovy. Fifteen years ago, under the threat of eviction, Frida's parents were rehoused within Wrexham's settled community. Put something like a sock or something down there. Much to the alarm of the locals. My mum was living on a site, just down the road more or less, and they wanted all the travellers to move into a house, <coughs> and they were all giving them all houses to move into. And there was a big commotion about it, saying we're going to cause litter and there's going to be mischief going on, really. But in the end, like, people got to know us, like our next door neighbour, she's really nice, there's no lady across the road. She's really, really nice, we've known them all our lives. So, do you know we're travellers and do you understand? We ain't as bad as everyone thinks we are. For Frida, marriage will not just signal an end to childhood, but see her returning to a more traditional traveller lifestyle. I'd rather live in a trailer. Because in a house you don't see nothing, you don't do nothing. You, it's the same thing week in, week out. It's just born. When do you officially move out of home? The day I get married, the day I say I do. And then the day after I'll be home. My home, not my mum and dad's home. And where's that? In the back garden. It's <laughs> not very far, I come from this room, outside. Boys, the boys, the boys, throw the boys out. We went all in there. No yeah, yeah, you had to go out. out. You have a fucking thing. We went in first. No, you don't give a shit. Come on, I'm Megan, Stephen. Come on, Kathleen. Uh, Margaret, where do you walk from? Come on, girls. Because traditionally they have lived a nomadic life on the road, the rare occasions when gypsies and travellers gather together have always held a special importance. The gypsy community have been meeting at the Appleby Horse Fair since the 16th century. And this year, the Welsh family have decided to christen seven-year-old Rachel here. Oh, do you like it? Do you want to wear that for your christening? 
It was what she wore for me cousin's wedding. I, I'd have bought her a new one, but I didn't know till about three days before we were getting a christened. We were just going to wait and get her done when we come back, and then my dad said, oh, it'd be a good idea to get a christened at Appleby. I could have cried because I thought you could have given me more notice, but that's men in it. Rachel's grandfather and fair organiser Billy Welsh holds an esteemed position within Gypsy society. Last year, he was forced to postpone Rachel's christening after relations with police reached a new low. Show them that we're respectable, honourable, proud people. This time around, Billy is determined his people will not be intimidated. But before the travellers even reach the fair, there is conflict with the police. They've been targeting gypsies and travellers all morning. There they go. And all them, all them boys was targeting. All they're waiting for is a gypsy or a traveller to come past. So they can get in front of them, lead them into that lay-by, and up, the rest of them can hit them with fines and points and just rub, basically rob them in a lay-by. By the time Billy reaches the lay-by to tell them what he thinks, the police have moved on, but the damage is already done. They've only stopped gypsies and travellers, and they're supposed to be back here tomorrow as well. It's ridiculous what they were doing. He rings the head of the road policing unit to let his objections be known. Listen, listen, last year it was disgusting the way the police behaved at Appleby. It was a disgrace. I could have even went further with it. I could have caused a lot of problems for people right at the top. Now, my people, before they'd ignore things, they'd let things go, tend to the cheek. This year, they're not going to do that, Ed. They've had enough. And, and we were just specifically targeted. Nobody else. It's not on, it's wrong. Won't put up with it no more. I'm sick to death. I've been trapped like dogs in our own country. Frida Berry is preparing for the biggest day of her life. Once married, she won't just be living at the bottom of her parents' garden, but will get to sample the life of her ancestors, travelling on the road. You all ready for it? Yes. He's born ready. That's <laughs> not about 20 minutes. <laughs> That's the only thing that a, a girl looks forward to is her dress and it's like something you plan for years and years. I want this and I want that and it's just something you look forward to, isn't it? How are you feeling, Frida? Alright. It's stressed now, huh? Downstairs, the stress levels are rising. Fuck's sake. The dressmaker made it too long and I don't understand how she could have done it. Oh. My tell you keep turning, you keep turning, right? Um, that way. That way? This is bad. This way. This is not good. This is really bad. But outside, the non-traveller neighbours, many of whom have been friends of the family since Frida's childhood, are out in force to catch a glimpse of her fairy tale dress. lovely to see because it's so different from our way of life and our weddings. People have got an idea of traveller families and when you live by them it's just not what people think at all. You have to live with them because they're absolutely brilliant. They blend in. To be perfectly honest you've got other ordinary families who are a lot more trouble than the travellers. <laughs> On the day of her wedding, Frida Berry is being transported to the church in a luxury Rolls Royce. But as the ceremony draws ever closer, wedding day jitters are increasingly apparent. What you know, this babe? <laughs> it's just nervous, isn't it? Once married, Frida will leave home and sample a new life traveling on the road. It's going to be weird because I've been with my mum and dad so long and always doing what my mum and dad say and I don't know, it's going to be different. 
Although their upbringings have been very different, Frida will be married in the same church as her mother was 24 years ago. How are you feeling, Kathleen? <laughs> but even in sub-zero temperatures, the extravagance of a modern traveller wedding draws a crowd. In Appleby, there are few signs of the tensions with the police that blighted last year's event. <laughs> and fair organiser Billy is pushing ahead with his plans to christen his granddaughter Rachel in this hallowed spot. We was going to do it last year, but then you heard about the carry on and the protests and things, so I end up having to cancel it. And then we'd never thought about it. We've been travelling up and down, been busy ever since. And then I said, right, on the way to Appleby this year, I said, this time we'll try and get her christened. Oh, she looks <gasps> like the princess. Beautiful. Welcome to St Lawrence's. And this is our sacred space. It's our sacred space in the settled community down here, your sacred space up at the top, as, as Billy and I have talked about. The fact that this is a very special place is Appleby. Rachel, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 After the travels of last summer, Billy's experience of this year's fair has been memorable for the right reasons. I think this is one of the very special Applebee's. Will definitely be this one. The Applebee are christened by little girl Rachel. And for him, it's events like Applebee that will continue to bind gypsy society together. We've been coming here for 500 years. It gives us a sense of ancestry. We've modernised in some ways. We are modernised people but we've managed to hang on to our culture and our traditions and our way of life. <laughs> Billy's son, 17-year-old Johnson Welsh, left school at an early age to work for the family business and has recently started his own venture. But as the son of a gypsy spokesman, the young entrepreneur is ever mindful of prejudice. What's your job? Um, well, I wouldn't like to say in case it, like, jeopardises my, like, business. It's not like the stereotypical, like, like, pikey, like, like job like oh uh, can I do your driveway can I do this and all that like it's not like a labourer's job I mean I'm not saying they're like Pikey's jobs like but like I don't know most people won't have heard of it but there's lots of things that travellers do that most people haven't heard of you just like to stereotype us Today, Johnson and his friend Robert are travelling to the Ebor Festival at York Racecourse. Should do it. It's one of the few events where travellers and non-travellers mix in large numbers. What's York like? You know, like spring break. I'm at the York is the York spring break for travellers. That's where it is. Get away from mum and dad. Let loose. Whoa! Can't find a grind it. Anticipating a big night, the boys have checked into a hotel in the town centre. What's the difference between um, York races and the other races through the year? York's more posher. York is our kind of races, really. It's been a tradition of coming here for years, our mums and dads come here. <coughs> you know what I mean? They come here when they was already. How often do you get to wear a suit? 
Maybe you just went as a wedding or not. Are you up, Tommy, you little fag easy. Wedding or York races or... The last time I wore the suit jacket, they had, they had blood all over it, so... I don't really wear it on my house no more. <laughs> Why, what, what happened? He got his period. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got head blood. I broke my blood vessel at the top of my nose. How did you get the blood out? My mum got it out, my mum's brilliant with stains. She put a hairspray on it and got it out. <laughs> Although gypsy men have always prided themselves on their macho credentials, the latest generation of travellers is also adopting more modern habits. Oh, no. Right, Johnson, what the fuck are you playing at? Are you talking to, you bastard? Yeah, look how long you take. What the fuck are you doing with yourself? In the summer sunshine, travellers from all over the country are converging on York races. But on this occasion, they will not be the only revellers in town. All the divs from York. What? Faggots. <laughs> Faggots! <laughs> Kick you up and down. Come on then! Come on then! Pricks! What were they saying? Being cheeky. Think of the rock hard as usual. Two weeks after her wedding day, Irish traveller Frida is moving from her parents' house to her new marital home. This here is the living room. <laughs> this is the bedroom. There's the ensuite in there. Oh, my stereo. My vibes. I got my speakers. I go bouncing. <laughs> Make a little disco with the lights on flashing. <laughs> I'm trying to rock in there. Are you enjoying married life? Yeah. It's different than I thought it was going to be. I don't know, it just feels like a dream at the moment. It don't, it don't feel like, it doesn't feel like I'm married. It just feels like I'm single and, you know, me and daddy has this trailer and I'm just cleaning it and making the bed and hacking in stuff. It just feels like up there. It'll probably hit me in another couple of months. <laughs> probably be crying now. <laughs> no. It ain't that bad. <laughs> Frida is going to taste life on the road. But for her, it is not the trailer that makes the traveller. Culture is dying out. Like, you won't see as many travellers travelling. You won't see as many travellers, like, living in trailers and whatever. But it doesn't exactly mean, like, you have to live in a trailer or you have to live in a, a house. So you'll still be a traveller no matter what. No one's going to take that away from you. But you're still who you are, who you are at the end of the day. So it's whatever you feel comfortable with. With the trailer, you bring in your home wherever you want to go and you're exploring different things and exploring different scenery and there's nothing holding us back now, is there, so... In York, Johnson and Robert have changed into their designer evening wear, ready for a night on the town. How are you boys? How are you doing? The town centre is flooded with travellers and the locals, anticipating trouble, are keeping the visitors on an unusually tight leash. We just went for some food. A security was like following us through the, following us through the restaurant. So we stopped and they went, can you just leave now, please? I said, uh, yeah, in a minute, like just two seconds. And like, he just pushed me straight out the door. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a grown up, but I'm definitely not a child. You can't treat me like that. It's very, very, very offensive, very disrespectful. <laughs> Many of the travellers have gathered in a handful of pubs across the city. How are you doing? And at the boys' next venue, the first signs of trouble materialise. A bit of carry on going on. I was one of the lads probably had a fight or something inside the pub. Because you get that many people together and you have a few drinks, 
there's, you get loads of people together, loads of different people. They just don't, some of them don't mix, you know what I mean? So, wait, what happened inside? I don't well, like, we don't like to say what's happened inside because it's, 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 it's gypsy gossip. Hey, mate, fuck off with the camera. As the evening progresses, the majority of gypsies gravitate towards one nightclub in the centre of town, transforming a small corner of York into a traveller-only zone. Tell you what, do not go there. It's pretty intimidating. Going in there, and you're like, oh, oh my god, everyone is just like, you're on edge a bit. Get in, get out. At one o'clock in the morning, the violence erupts. What happened last night in the club? Like, it all happened at once, really. Like, I just looked up, some people up there, killing each other, some people up there, and then they were running across the floor, and I was all like, well, oh, you know what's going to happen now, it's going to get shut down, isn't it? And it is. When you get a couple of us somewhere, you don't just get a couple of us, you get all of us. So you're going to have trouble. Because travellers don't go anywhere on their own. All of us aren't bad. Most of us, 99% like, of us are good. Honest, decent people. But obviously, we, there is some bad ones. And when we go places, all of us go. So the good ones and the bad ones do go. And people remember the bad ones, they don't remember the good ones, do they? For over a decade, a small patch of land in Essex has been the focal point of tensions between travellers and non-travellers. The 85 families who reside at Dale Farm own the land, but their right to build on it is fiercely disputed. The travellers claim that they are the victims of racism. The locals remain unmoved. They just run the place, they're horrible. They're not from the local area, they're Irish. Now, amidst a blaze of publicity, a court ruling in favour of eviction has brought the crisis to a head and the world's media have descended. A woman is attached by her neck. If you attempt to open it, you will kill her. But away from the more excitable headlines, the lives of the site's young residents, including Mary Ann, also hang in the balance. Two years ago, in less turbulent times, Mary Ann's mother, Margaret, held her first Holy Communion on the site. Mom, how do you look brilliant? But even then, the threat of eviction loomed large. This is our last job. We don't stand up and fight now. Well, this is going to keep happening. We're never going to be able to get sites built. We're never going to be able to buy a piece of ground and move in as being our own. So we're going to have to make a stand somewhere, and it's going to be here. Now that don't happen. If we do, like, no, if everything can burn down, we're going to... We have to live in the side of the road. We're going to have to live in the side of the, ro ro side of the road. I'm coming! Now aged 10, Mary Ann has lived on Dale Farm her entire life and finds herself at the centre of one of the most controversial evictions in recent memory. There's God protecting us, helping us. And look, look at this flower. It's really nice, ain't it? Tell us about the statue. It protects us from getting evicted. We pray for it every day. It's nice. That helps us. Helps us. What are you going to miss most about Dale Farm? <laughs> our homes, fun, take care, our friends, our school, everything. Despite the chaos, life's necessities still find their way through the barricades to the site's inhabitants. You can just leave that there, it doesn't matter. 
Of course we're not going to leave peacefully. It's our home. We're not going to leave it all. If my peacefully, violently, we're not moving. Simple as. <laughs> Irish traveller Mary came here when she was just six years old. We are a closer community than any settled person in the world. Nobody has as much friends as travellers. Here you can get up, you can go, do what you want, you can run, no fear. But if you're a settled community and you get up in the daytime and you like walk your dog down the street or you're walking to have a drink or something, you get into a taxi and the next thing you know you're in the middle of a car park at night and then you're on crime watch the week after. Because look how many people. There's something going on out there. Gays have rights. Lesbians have rights. And gypsies still haven't got rights. We're going through that much stuff. Next, spaceships will have rights. They're allowed to land. UFOs are allowed to live on the ground if they want. And gypsies will still be on behind them screaming, we won't go. Settlements like Dale Farm, where travellers can live together in large numbers, are few and far between. But not unique. For ten months of the year, the residents of Rathkeel in Ireland spend their lives on the road travelling throughout the world. In December, they return home to marry each other during the wedding season. It just burst me blister. What? I just burst me blister. Today, one such wedding has brought cake maker Jill and her assistant Irish traveller Noreen to the town for the first time. Oh my God, look at the mud. And this is all travellers. Look, travellers everywhere. I thought Dale Farm was big, but this is like Dale Farm with houses that they can't evict you from. Yeah. Look at Look at the cars. Wow. Have you ever seen anything like this in England? No, never. Not like this here in England now. Every single house is a traveller. Yeah, you can tell. That's just amazing, isn't it? It's just like one big traveller site. But you've got your town, you've got your shops, and then you've got your traveller houses everywhere. It's just absolutely... I'm getting locked up. Yeah, they know that we're strangers. They know that we're strangers. And they're even worse, I'm a country person. <laughs> Rathkeel's annual wedding season sees up to ten ceremonies take place each week, a tradition that has kept dress designer Thelma Medine busy. Rathkeel is a, is a traveller village that apparently some time ago it started where one family um, actually bought a house in Rathkeel and same old racist thing, um, you know, it was like, oh, you know, you're not going to sell your house if it's next door to a traveller. So they sold that house to another traveller and then it's just snowball from then. <laughs> On this occasion, Thelma is making the journey to Rathkeel at the request of 18-year-old bride-to-be Chantelle Keeley. She has commissioned two outfits, one for Rathkeel's traditional night-before party, the second, her wedding dress. We're off, we're off on a motor car. 60 travellers are after us and we don't know where we are. <laughs> this girl hasn't even seen her wedding dress yet. Even once, she's, she's, she's never seen it. She's never tried it on and she's getting married tomorrow. I think she's going to be thrilled with it. I think she's going to love it. Right. This is where it all starts now. This is where it all begins. <laughs> all in this room. All in this room. Oh, Is it lovely. gorgeous? Gorgeous. I told you you'd love it. Oh, it's lovely. This is the nicest one, honestly. <laughs> it's lovely. Do you like it? Yeah, love it. Oh, that way. Hey, don't you be trying. Hey, I was supposed to try it on first. She's not gorgeous. That's what Please, you want to look, look right. Get it off! <laughs> <laughs> She's taking it off. What is it with these sisters? You try your wedding dress on now. No, I'll leave it till tomorrow. Till tomorrow, the day you wed it, the morning you wed it. <laughs> now that's trust, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely. Where are these? Where oh, are you know, you know. And just looking at the. Where am I supposed to put this? Night before parties are an ever popular local tradition. Oh, lovely. Nice, isn't it? The Rathkeel fashion favours the flamboyant, 
And for tonight's event, Chantal has commissioned outfits for her mother, her sister and her niece. What do you think of the dress you're wearing? It's nice. There's a lot of can-cans. Well, this is the top, this is a skirt, and this is a can-can, and this is a skirt, and this is a, and this is a skirt, and this is a can-can. Tonight's celebration will be hosted by club owner Davy Mann, a non-traveller who helps provide for the Rathkeel wedding season. It's a treating night more than anything. It's a pre-wedding party, but it's where the, the parents of the bride treats the parents and the family of the groom. What do you think of the night before dresses? Oh, they're beautiful. It's shaking. It's like a Barbie doll. <laughs> Both families are out in force to celebrate tomorrow's wedding between Chantel and Jim, her first cousin. But as well as throwing a party, the bride's family will often keep with another costly traveller tradition. In the olden days, the bride's father and mother had to pay over money to the groom's parents, and it was called a dowry. And uh, their tradition in the travelling community, in well, in Rathkeel anyway, whatever what other people have, um, have still held on to that tradition. So the dowries can be fairly substantial. Now, I can't say for definite, but from what I hear, they could range anything between 50 to 120,000 euros, that is. In the winding lanes of the Irish countryside, cake maker Jill and her assistant, Irish traveller Noreen, are transporting their lavish creation to the wedding. But finding the venue is proving problematic. Is it down this way? No. Is that kind of postcode in this godforsaken place? Now it's in 18 minutes past. We've added I don't our hair, Nori. <sighs> so we have to be around here somewhere. Oh, is that it? Where's the turning? Oh, where's the friggin' turning? It's not it, dude. That's like a castle thing, isn't it? Okay, here, in here. I'm telling you, it's in here. In here? Go in there and turn into where that little fence is there. Right, that you can get in there. And that's right. a castle. A... I've... Jill just it's turned. It's a lovely place. They may have found what looks like the venue, but with so many weddings going on in Rathkeel, they can't be sure it's the right one. Which one? Jill, that's not funny. That wasn't funny. Nine o'clock, and now we're behind schedule. Twenty past nine, twenty past eight, twenty past eleven, say twelve. So we've got like two and a half hours to finish that cake. Do you reckon you'll get it done in time? Oh yeah, we'll get it done. We got God on our side. In Essex, the eviction of the travellers at Dale Farm is finally due to take place. The courtroom battles are over. The fight will now play out between the police and the non-travel activists who've arrived to defend them. I want to give you the holy oil from Israel. Have it, put your finger in the thing. This holy oil from Israel has come all the way from Israel. We, we, you know, the Jesus people. Please be upon it. <laughs> For residents like Mary Ann, the struggle to stay together has finally reached their doorstep. They are going to get in, and they're evil. The never break us travellers, never. They tried to shove us away, give us bricks and water. It's not our culture and we'll never accept them, never. I would never live in a house down it. I would be isolated away. I'm not used to it. My children wouldn't have it. We're used to it. Family being together. Living in a house next to a country person who would not like travellers, how would we get on? We would never get on. As soon as a traveller moves into the house, you're a traveller and we'd be getting the hate mail in the letterbox. And we know that. 
because we have put up with this our whole life. I'm shocked that they're doing this. It's not really good. How would you like if I evict your homes? Would you feel bad? Would you feel worried? It's really not good. Now we're going right, Bravo going straight ahead. By 11.30, the police have broken through the main gates and are moving ever further into the heart of Dale Farm. Fucking stop! 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 We want this to be peaceful, boys. I beg of you. No, listen. Listen, boys. I beg of you. When the violence erupts in earnest, it's the activists who are on the front line. He came into just that shoving us all out of the way, so I fell and hit the face off the wall. Nora's gone to hospital because she's after hurting her back. She's gone. They were rough. They were I don't feel like a human being at all. I don't feel like I've been treated like a human being. I've been talked to like a human being. Like, in all fairness, you're not just going to run over and strangle a human being on the ground, are you? And kick them out of the way. You wouldn't do that to an animal. An animal has more rights than travellers, as far as I can see. As the police move through the site, more and more activists are arrested. There's not enough hippies to save our lives. There need, there need to be more. There's not enough, look. Not even enough. Half of them got arrested. There's not enough. With their supporters removed, the travelers' cause is now hopeless. The residents' 10-year battle has ended in defeat. And with the eyes of the world upon them, they take the symbolic decision to walk away from their homes. For everybody for the whole world to see that the travellers and the supporters, activists, we all live proud people with our heads held high and to show the world that we ever only wanted a peaceful eviction to begin with. Sick. Sick. Far from the drama of Dale Farm, it is the day of Chantel Keeley's wedding in the traveller haven of Rathkeel. Dressmaker Thelma is helping the bride-to-be into a dress adorned with over 20,000 crystals. I reckon it's 12 on 12. I'm definitely late for a chapel, I think you know. <laughs> what time are you supposed to be at the chapel? Uh, half 11. <laughs> okay, sorry about no, this, but right. just put up with it a minute. Oh, God, I don't feel like myself. <laughs> sorry. She looks gorgeous. What do you think, Vanessa? She's a beautiful bride. <laughs> <laughs> but they are really nice people, these the ones from Rathkeel. And the girls are very respectful. We always say the Irish travellers like going back 50 years. The girls from Rathkeel, it's like going back 100 years. <laughs> now let's get off to the chapel till I get married. <laughs> Chantel has chosen seven bridesmaids, though in a town where everybody knows everybody, singling out your best man can be difficult. And are you one of the best men? I am, yes. My cousin get married. How many best men are there? 73. Yeah. Is that normal? Uh, that's around uh, average. Push, push, push.
In her vintage carriage, Chantelle is delivered to the chapel on time. But it soon transpires that high-profile dressmakers are not necessarily welcome. We've just been thrown out the chair. Literally threw us out. Should be reported. Should, you must have something to hide. Side. You must have something to hide if you like that. And he, he just went, look, get them out, Mary, get them out. He was like that. I said, are you throwing us out of God's house? And he wouldn't answer. I said, are you throwing us out of God's house? And he said, I've got your assistant. I said, no, God has. Yeah. I'm going to report, I'm going to write a letter to the Pope. Well, come on, yeah, let's yeah. go. Yes. With Chantel and her new husband Jim securely inside the reception venue, the celebrations can begin. You make the most beautiful bride I've seen, honestly, and I'm not messing. The dress looks beautiful, she really does. All the bridesmaids look lovely. Uh, the mum looks stunning as well. She looks like a princess, but so, she can't be topped. She's the nicest bride in the whole lot. <laughs> Thelma has been to hundreds of traveller weddings elsewhere. But Rathkeel is a unique town with its own unique atmosphere. This is completely different to the weddings that you're doing. There's never any fights here at all. They're all family. They're all family, you know, they're all linked in some way. And that's how I think they keep the wealth in Rathkeel because they just don't let it go out. I want to thank my mother and father for giving me this big day. My two sisters and all the people I'm joining up the wedding. Up the wedding! Up the wedding! The battle for control of Dale Farm took over a decade. The final eviction itself cost the taxpayer in excess of seven million pounds. All of the 80 families that had called the small patch of land home were successfully removed and forced onto the road. Though months after the eviction, many of the travelers still reside just yards from the gates, on land not covered by the eviction notice. If I say keep out, I'd just walk away. I wouldn't do that if I was a bailiff. I wouldn't be nasty. I wouldn't be evil. I wouldn't be unkind to be like a bailiff like that. Though their future is uncertain, it is experiences like Dale Farm that shape the way gypsies and travelers see the world. You have to grow up faster. The moment you hit 11, you're acting like you're 18. That's the way it goes. You just grow up fast. The kids that have kid lives until you're about nine, nine tops, and then you still know what's going on. And the reason we're brought up fast is because of things like this. And shapes the way the world sees gypsies and travellers. It's not fair. Look, it's not man in dead. Someone let him do it. I meant to say it's not meant to be happening. There's not going to be this much community ever again together. There's no happy after on the Gypsy Cinderella story. <laughs> Heartbreaking. Next time, we find out how love has blossomed since an unconventional courtship. He grabbed her, she kissed him, he kissed her, and he got married. I'm gonna grow her, mold her how I want her to be. Oh my God! Bad
bitch. And witness the tight bonds of a traveller family during a time of celebration. Family's very important. That's who you've got to turn on when anything goes wrong. Funny how things change, isn't it? Half an hour ago, I was in a jail. 